everyone. Thank you for joining us again. If you missed our last video, be sure to check it out at arttoremember.com. It has two science-based art lessons that I know you will love, including painting with pendulums and making art with robots. I'm Kelly from Art to Remember. I want to show you a few ways that you can easily integrate art into your classroom. This video will focus on math-based art integration. We'll show you some basic concepts, but the ideas can easily be adapted for a variety of grade levels by increasing the complexity and the depth of both the math and art portions of the lesson. We hope that these lessons will inspire you in your STEAM-based classroom. If you would like to download copies of the lesson plan, visit our website at arttoremember.com or go to the Art to Remember booth in the Education Closet Virtual Exhibitor Hall. For our first lesson, we're going to take a look at tangrams. I'm sure most of you are familiar with tangrams and possibly have a few sets in your classroom. If you don't have a set, these are simple to make out of paper. You can download a template from our website and make several copies for your classroom. Tangrams are a great way to introduce your students to geometry and get them involved in more complex concepts in a hands-on way. For younger students, you can use the tangrams to identify and classify different shapes, and with other students, you can use them to calculate area or show orientation on a coordinate plane. To turn this into an art lesson, you'll just need a few more supplies, paper and pencil, and either markers, crayons, or watercolors. For this example, we're gonna use crayons, pencil, and watercolors. Using the tangrams, we're gonna make geometric animals. You will start by encouraging your students to play around with the tangrams and see what shapes or animals that they can make out of their set. You may even want to provide sample cards like these to help them along. Once they've decided on an animal, have the student trace each individual shape. Depending on the type of art you'd like to create, you could also have the students just trace the outline of the animal to make a silhouette. Next, have students remove the tangrams and trace over the pencil in crayon. They can also add in additional background elements like a horizon line and some small plants. Then we will fill in all of the white space with watercolor. The crayon outline should help younger students keep the watercolors within the lines. If watercolors aren't an option for your students, this lesson can easily be adapted to work with crayons, markers, or even colored pencils. You may want to have them finish the piece by outlining their animal in black. Let's look at a few examples. For the second math art integration lesson, we're going to work with compasses. Compasses are a great hands-on tool to not only talk about circles, diameters, and radii, but they can be used to show angles and discuss scale and radial design. You can talk about concentric circles, the diameter of different circles, or how the angle affects the size of the circle. If your students are really advanced, you could calculate area of the circles as well. This is a great time to tie in a bit of art history and have students make an adaptation of Kandinsky's piece, Squares with Concentric Circles. For our version, we'll use paper, watercolors, paintbrushes, water, and paper, but you could adapt this lesson to work with pencils, markers, or crayons. Students will replace the pencil and the compass with a paintbrush. Depending on the design of your compass, you may need to use tape to hold it in place. You may also want to tape the edges of the paper down so it doesn't move.
start, have your students mark six points, equal distance apart on their paper. Next, they can start with either the smallest or largest circle and work their way in or out. You can let students choose their favorite colors, have them work in tones, or focus half of their paper on warm colors and the other half on cool colors. Students can dip their paintbrush in water, then their favorite paint color, and practice making circles with the paint. Once they finish making their circles, there are many ways to fill the page with color. You can have students lightly shade the entire paper, or they can fill in the white space between the circles with different colors. The nice part about the arts integration portion of this lesson is that students have a lot of artistic freedom with the color, design, layout, and scale. Let's look at a few examples. Art to Remember has made the fundraising process as simple as possible, which is why teachers love it. Students and parents love it too because they get to purchase keepsake items featuring their students' artwork. We know that teachers are busy, so we've made the process very simple. You can complete the entire fundraiser in five easy steps. But I think the most important reason that schools do uh, choose Art to Remember is that we work every single year to make the program as easy as possible for the art teachers. Um, uh, that, that, that work on it. I mean, we, uh, one of our core values is continuous improvement and we focus on how do we help schools make more money and do less work making that, um, you know, making that extra money. Um, and we've boiled the program down uh, to five simple steps that the teachers can, uh, when they do that five simple steps, they're all done with the program um, and we get feedback every single year about how easy the program is and even more rewarding to us how much easier it was this year than it was last year. I really feel like Art to Remember has um, products that parents really want to have with their child's artwork on it. I think they make excellent Christmas gifts and um, gifts for loved ones and um, it just seems to make more sense to um, use Art to Remember as our fundraiser than any of the other products that are out there. The reason that we've chosen to do Art to Remember is the fact that while it is a fundraiser, it's really not a fundraiser because so many times during fundraisers, you know, we all sell products that $10 worth of gummy bears in a plastic cup and it's really not a very good value. But with Art to Remember, we sell a product which parents and grandparents and everybody wants. It's a product that's of high quality, and it's a product that the children have created and lasting memory. So that's why we do Art to Remember. We've always found that it's very easy to work with. The program is very simple. Send it in, the product comes back. We've done a nice job of filling our orders. And if there's ever a problem, they take care of it immediately. It's a very painless process. There are many more ways that you can incorporate math and art into your STEAM classroom. We hope that these lessons are a source of inspiration and we would love to see how you adapt them to work for your class. If you're interested in trying out these lessons in your classroom, I would encourage you to think about tying it into an art-based fundraiser. 
Art to Remember will provide the paper for all of your students and in turn you can raise money for your supplies for other STEAM based projects.